Carbon is a central element of organic chemistry. But in many reactions, oxygen plays a major role because of its unique electronic structure. As a result, we sometimes observe behavior that appears to contradict the classical roles taught in introductory organic chemistry. A well-known example comes from the carbohydrate chemistry, where a carbon-oxygen bond can be more stable in the axial position. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what the anomeric effect is and how it controls reactivity pattern in organic chemistry in 3D space to give you a crystal understanding of this concept. This video is based on a paper by Professor Igor Alabogin. I've included the link in the description. Let's get us started with the concept of delocalization. Usually, we represent molecules using Lewis structures, bonds as lines and valence electrons as dots. But molecules are nothing like the lines and dots we draw on the paper, and its representation is not fully satisfying. Molecules are complex quantum objects in which electrons are delocalized around the atomic nuclei. We often describe this delocalization using resonance forms. However, to gain a more precise perspective, we need to look at delocalization through the lens of orbital interactions. Generally speaking, delocalization can be divided into conjugation, hyperconjugation, and sigma conjugation. Conjugation is the interaction between pi bonds and pi orbitals. For example, butadiene is a conjugated system. Hyperconjugation is the interaction between sigma and pi orbitals. Recall the carbohydrate example, where the carbon-oxygen bond is more stable in axial position. This is a classic example of hyperconjugation, in which non-bonding electrons interact with the entire bonding orbital of a carbon-oxygen bond. Sigma conjugation is another type of delocalization in which sigma orbitals interact with each other. 1,2-difluoroethene is an example of sigma conjugation, where electrons in a CH bound interact with the entire bonding orbital of the CF bound. You may be less familiar with this type of interaction because it doesn't involve pi bonds or non-bonding electrons. In this video, we'll focus on a specific type of hyperconjugation known as anomeric effect which is defined as interaction between an oxygen lone pair and the entire bonding orbital of a suitable acceptor bond. All three types of delocalization are based on orbital interactions, collectively known as stereoelectronic effects. I've created another video where I explain this concept in more depth. You can find the link in the description along with many interesting examples of this phenomenon. To continue our discussion, we need to understand how a carbon-oxygen bond interacts with other functional groups. This is a molecular orbital picture of a carbon-oxygen bond. Here is a bonding orbital filled with electrons, and here is the entire bonding orbital. On the other hand, the oxygen atom also has non-bonding electrons. When needed, oxygen can use these non-bonding electrons and act as a donor group. In other words, electrons from the lone pair can move into an empty orbital of a suitable acceptor. At the same time, the carbon-oxygen bond can act as a good acceptor because it has an empty anti-bonding orbital. In this case, electrons from a donor group move into the empty anti-bonding orbital of a carbon-oxygen bond. Because of this dual behavior, we say that the carbon-oxygen bond has two phases. It can change its role depending on the environment, almost like a chameleon. I've also created another video where I explain this chameleonic behavior of the carbon-oxygen bond in more detail. Check it out if you are interested. Now let's see a simple model of anomeric effect in carbohydrates when the carbon-oxygen bond is more stable in axial position. At first glance, you might think that one free dioxial interactions in the chair conformation destabilize this conformation. But the anomeric effect is the stabilizing factor. Here are the non-bonding orbitals of the oxygen atom. In the axial conformation, the back lobe of the anti-bonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond is coplanar with the non-bonding electrons of the oxygen in the ring. Because of this specific geometry, they can interact with each other and stabilize the compound. In other words, this oxygen atom is a donor group in which non-bonding electrons move into the empty anti-bonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond. We can show this anomeric effect using this resonance form. Orbital interaction in the anomeric effect needs specific geometry. Two groups should be anti-periplanar to each other for maximum orbital interaction. If two groups are planar, anti, and parallel to each other, we can say that they are anti-periplanar. 
In this case, the non-bonding electrons in the p orbital of the oxygen are anti-periplanar with the carbon-oxygen bond in the axial position. Now it's time to dive into more complex examples. To completely understand the anomeric effect, let's look at this beautiful example. Trioxoadamentane is a cage-like compound. As you can see, there is one exocyclic carbon-oxygen bond and three endocyclic carbon-oxygen bonds. The interesting fact about this structure is that the lengths of the carbon-oxygen bonds are not equal. The length of the exocyclic carbon-oxygen bond is 1.373 angstrom. Two of the endocyclic carbon-oxygen bonds have almost the same length, and the other one is slightly shorter. However, the exocyclic carbon-oxygen bond is shorter than all three endocyclic carbon-oxygen bonds. We can rationalize it using the anomeric effect. Now let's go through the carbon-oxygen bonds one by one to see what's going on. For this carbon-oxygen bond, there are three antiperiplanar non-bonding electrons. Two of them come from endocyclic oxygen atoms, and another one comes from the exocyclic oxygen lone pair. So we have three anomeric interactions for this carbon-oxygen bond. This carbon-oxygen bond also experiences three anomeric effects. Just like the previous case, two line pairs from endocyclic oxygen atoms and one from the exocyclic oxygen are antiperiplanar to this carbon-oxygen bond. For the last carbon-oxygen bond, there are two anomeric effects and all of them come from endocyclic oxygen atoms. Because in the exocyclic oxygen, there is no line pair antiperiplanar to this carbon-oxygen bond. Now look at this resonance form, which shows a simple model of the anomeric effect. As you can see, the bond related to the donor group has partial double bond character. So the bond length is shorter than a normal single bond. On the other hand, in the acceptor, the bond is weakened, and we show it as a broken bond. So the bond length is longer than a normal single bond. Let's go back to our case. These two endocyclic carbon-oxygen bonds experience three anomeric effects, and their bond lengths are almost the same. But for this one, there are two anomeric effects. So this one is shorter than the other two endocyclic carbon-oxygen bonds. Another point is that three endocyclic oxygen atoms are donors and acceptors at the same time. But the exocyclic oxygen is only a donor because there is no line pair antiperiplanar to the exocyclic carbon-oxygen bond. So this bond is shorter than all three endocyclic carbon-oxygen bonds. Until now, we explored the anomeric effect in compounds with good acceptors. This means a highly electronegative atom like oxygen or halogens should be attached to the carbon atom to accept non-bonding electrons from a donor group. But carbon-hydrogen bond can also be affected by the anomeric effect under some reaction conditions, although they are not good acceptors. Look at this reaction in which THF reacts with singlet oxygen to install a peroxide at the alpha position relative to the oxygen atom. This is a good example of CH activation by the anomeric effect. Notice that atmospheric oxygen is a triplet oxygen, which is relatively unreactive toward carbon hydrogen bonds. So, singlet oxygen is generated under LED light in the presence of a photosynthesizer and it's more electrophilic. The anomeric effect plays a key role in the transition state. Here you can see the transition state in which the carbon-hydrogen bond is breaking and a new carbon-oxygen bond is forming. The lone pairs of the oxygen atom interact with the entire bonding orbital of the carbon-hydrogen bond and weaken this bond. So oxygen can abstract this hydrogen more easily thanks to the presence of the neighboring oxygen atom. In other words, the anomeric effect controls the reduce-selectivity of this reaction. This regioselectivity becomes even more interesting when we use isochromin in its reaction. Now there are two possible sites for oxidation, but only one of them is oxidized selectively. Pause the video and try to identify the major product. This carbon-hydrogen bond is activated by the anomeric effect. This one is also activated by the anomeric effect but it's at benzylic position. So it's activated more than the other carbon atom and is oxidized selectively. The first product is a peroxide, but it's not stable and is converted into thermodynamically more stable lactam. Another interesting example is CH insertion of alkylidine carbenes. 
ریکال فرام اینتروداکتوری اورگانیک کیمستری و ا کاربین سنتر از ان ام تی اوربیتال الونگ وذ فیلد اوربیتال سو ات دی سیم تایم ایت کان اکت از بوت ا دونر اند ان اکسپتور سی اچ انسرشن اف الکیلیدین کاربینز اکیرز فرو ا کانسرتد پروسس این دی ترانزیشن استیت دی کاربن هایدروجن بان ایز بریکینگ وایل دی نیو کاربن کاربن بان ایز فورمینگ ات دی سیم تایم نوتیس دت فر ار تو هایدروجنز ات دی سیم دیستانس ریلیتیو تو دی کاربین سنتر One of them is attached to a carbon atom, and the other is attached to an oxygen. Again, the anomeric effect controls this reaction, because the non-bonding electrons of oxygen are anti-periplanar to this oxyal carbon-hydrogen bond. The anomeric effect weakens this bond. As a result, this carbon-hydrogen bond is more reactive than the other. Now imagine there is no oxyal hydrogen relative to the oxygen atom, and both hydrogens are equatorial. In this new conformation, the reactivity of the hydrogens is inverted. This is because oxygen now has only an inductive effect on the alpha hydrogen. Unlike the anomeric effect, the inductive effect deactivates this carbon-hydrogen bond. In other words, the high electronegativity of the oxygen atom makes breaking the carbon-hydrogen bond harder than breaking the other carbon-hydrogen bond. So this time, the other hydrogen is more reactive and reacts with the carbene center to construct a five-membered ring. This example nicely illustrates the anomeric effect versus the inductive effect of the oxygen atom and how they change the reactivity pattern.